Hello students, welcome to Mr. Ticket Classes. Today we are doing the statement of financial position and this is our question. The question reads, the following information relates to Flamingo Limited for the year ended 31 December 2020. Information, balances on 31 December 2020. Additional information required, prepare the following. A. Ordinary share capital note, retained income note. B. Statement of financial position as at that 1 December 2020. We are going to do part B. Right? This is where we are going to prepare our answer. So, for you to be able to prepare the statement of financial position, you should know its layout. So, the layout starts with assets. Under assets, we have non-current assets and current assets. Under non-current assets, we have tangible assets and financial assets. Financial assets. Fixed deposit. Fixed deposit. Right? So, let us go back to our information. Tangible assets. This is the amount. Let us go through our additional information. Right, we don't have anything that is related to tangible assets under additional information, so we are going to take eleven million seven hundred and fifty four thousand three hundred. Then, uh, fix the deposit. This is the amount. Let us go through our additional information. Okay, we don't have anything that is related to fix the deposit under our additional information, so we are going to take. 69,810 right then um, let us add 11,754,300 plus 69,810 52 we are going to get 11,824,152 right now we move on to our current assets inventory all right trading stock let us uh, go through our additional information okay all right unused stationary amounted to 22800 so 22800 okay let us scroll down According to the physical stock taking that was done on 31 December 2020, inventory was valued at 206,400. So inventory was valued at 206,400. So if we have inventory according to physical stock taking, this one that is under adjustments, this is the amount that we take. If we don't have this adjustment for physical stock taking, it means we can take inventory under balances. All right, so we are going to take this one. Now let us uh, let us add twenty two thousand eight hundred plus two hundred and six thousand four hundred. We are going to get. 229,200 then let us move on to trade and other receivables we are going to take data's control of 276,000 all right then we are going to subtract provision for bad debts okay let us go through our additional information the provision for bad debts must be increased to 12,120 all right, so we said you are going to subtract, right? We are going to subtract 12,110. We, subtra we subtract this amount that provision for bad debts has been adjusted to. This is the one that we subtract. We subtract this amount that provision for bad debts has been adjusted to. Unless if a uh, provision for bad debts, unless if the provision for bad debts has not been adjusted. Then we can subtract this one. So we are going to subtract this one. Right then, 
let us move on to the next bullet insurance included an annual policy of 70,560 paid for on 1 june 2020 all right so let us go to our working papers we are going to say we are dealing with the trade and other receivables trade and other receivables trade and other receivables all right so here we'll be looking for a uh, prepaid expenses right prepaid expenses and we will be also looking for a uh, outstanding income outstanding outstanding income this is what we will be looking for right this is what we will be looking for this is what we'll be looking for all right this is what we'll be looking for okay so now we are dealing with insurance now we are dealing with insurance we are dealing with insurance now let us see if we have any prepaid expense there all right insurance included an annual policy of 70560 paid for on 1 june 2020 okay we need to know our financial year we need to know our financial year we need to know our financial year all right our financial year ends on 31 december 2020 so it means we are going to say 1 january 1 january 2022 that one december right 2020 okay this is our financial year this is our financial year all right let us go back so this is the insurance and it was paid for on 1 june 2020 uh so we are going to say insurance insurance paid we are going to say insurance paid insurance paid right insurance paid uh, 70560 and is equals to 12 months right it's equals to 12 months because this is an annual policy right so it is equals to 12 months all right so this was paid on this this was paid for on 1 june 2020 so we are going to say we are going to say insurance expense insurance expense is equals to is equals to we count from june up to december right from 1 june up to 31 december because remember our financial year ends on 31 december 2020 so we are going to count and we will find this is what we we'll get right seven months then insurance prepaid insurance prepaid okay insurance prepaid that means this is going to be five months five months right 12 subtract 7 is equals to five months so this will be easy we are going to say 5 divided by 12 multiplied by this amount that was paid 70,560 what do we get what do we get we are going to say 5 over 12 multiplied by 70,560 we are going to get 29,400 29,400 this is our insurance prepaid this is our insurance prepaid so we are going to add we are going to add 29,400 we are going to add 29,400 insurance prepaid right then 
unused stationary we are done with this a data with a credit balance of 27,600 has to be transferred to the creditors ledger all right let us come here let us come here all right transfer of balance transfer of balance okay um all right a data with a credit balance so trade receivables control it means this was 27600 here yeah, on the credit side because they are saying a data with a credit balance so this is uh, the amount that uh, needs to be transferred to the creditors ledger so we we'll transfer this from the trade receivables control to trade payables control so for us to transfer the first step we have to remove it from trade receivables control so when you are removing it means we are going to debit because we are removing something that is on the credit side so we are going to debit right when you have debited here it means that the other entry will be on the credit side under the trade uh, payables control account so the thing is this is an asset account this is a liabilities account so an asset account increases on the debit side and decreases on the credit side then a liabilities account it decreases on the debit side and increases on the credit side that's why we have a plus here a minus here a plus here a minus here so since we said the plus 27600 it means we are going to come here and say plus 27600 the plus 27600 is coming from here right then we'll look at this when you are doing trade in other purpose so we should not forget this all right let us go back okay we can see we have this one a payment of 69600 that was made to a creditor all right so this uh, this will go under liabilities let us skip that let us skip that okay mm, all right this uh, is another one that we should look at before we move on income tax for the year amounted to 420000 this was calculated at 28 percent of the corrected net profit okay uh, we are going to come here we are going to come here and say income tax income tax we are going to come here and say income tax all right so when it comes to income tax when it comes to income tax we can see that we have a income tax for the year which is the year and we have um we have provisional payment here sas income tax provisional payments so we are going to say provisional payments provisional payments provisional payments and this is equals to 720000 we are also going to say we are also going to say all right um we are also going to say income tax for the year income tax for the year income tax for the year what is the amount all right we are going to scroll down the amount is 420000 420000 so the idea is if we have paid more than what we should have paid it means that there's an asset or there's a tax refund right if we if we have paid less than what we should have paid it means that there's a tax liability because we have paid less than what we should have paid in this case there is a tax refund 
because we have paid more than what we should have paid right the tax refund is we are going to say this subtract this we are going to get 300,000 so this is the tax refund we have overpaid tax with this amount so it is a tax refund it is an asset so we are going to add it here we are going to add it here we are going to add it here all right then let us uh, do our calculation 276,000 subtract 12,120 plus 29,400 plus 27,600 plus 300,000 we are going to get 620,880 620,880 then the next thing is cash and cash and cash equivalence cash and cash equivalence cash and cash equivalence all right cash and cash equivalence we know that here yeah, we should record bank pet cash saving account check account and all that all right so um let us check here yeah. i can see we have bank 842,400 all right and we have this adjustment which is talking about a payment that was recorded twice okay so let us open brackets let us open brackets all right we are going to say 842,400 all right let us come here then we see if we are going to add or subtract a payment of 69,600 that was made to a creditor during the year was mistakenly recorded twice by the bookkeeper. All right. So this payment was mistakenly recorded twice. Which means that this amount was subtracted twice from the bank amount. Right. So we are going to add back the other amount that was not supposed to be subtracted since it was subtracted twice that amount was not supposed to be subtracted let us add it back all right what are we going to get what are we going to get 842,400 plus 69,600 we are going to get 912,000 we are going to get 912,000 all right um okay this uh, transaction we are going to look at it again when we are doing our liabilities because you can see that it has something to do with the creditor here all right so now let us add let us add we are going to say 229,200 plus 620,880 plus 912,000 we are going to get 1 million one million seven hundred and sixty two thousand and eighty okay okay then let us add our assets we already have the total for current assets there let us add eleven million eight hundred and twenty four thousand one hundred and fifty two we are going to get thirteen million five hundred and eighty six thousand two hundred and thirty two okay that's what we get there let us move on to our equities and liabilities section so we have shareholders equity uh, where we have ordinary share capital and retained income and retained income all right so ordinary share capital and retained income we have covered this when you are doing part a you should look for the tutorial video of part a all right so we are simply going to take the amount here seven million one hundred and ninety three thousand six hundred this is the amount okay let us take it here let us take it here okay seven million one hundred and ninety three thousand six hundred then let us take the one for retained income let us take the one for retained income this is the amount 
okay uh, let us take it here right okay then we are going to add we are going to add seven million one hundred and ninety three thousand six hundred plus nine hundred and five thousand and eighty what do we get eight million eight million and ninety eight thousand six hundred and eighty eight million and ninety eight thousand six hundred and eighty okay then let us move on to our liability section we have non-current liabilities and current liabilities here we have loan right we have loan this is the loan amount that we have but remember that uh, this loan amount okay let me come here and say loan loan we are going to have um, an amount that will go under non-current that will go under non-current liabilities right and an amount that will go under current liabilities right okay so uh, we are going to say okay let us do this all right so the amount that will go under non-current liabilities is the loan amount that will be paid back in more than 12 months the amount that will go under current liabilities will be the loan amount that will be paid back in 12 months or less right okay so the total loan amount what is it the total loan amount what is it um this is the amount three hundred and four thousand one hundred and fifty two this is the amount then now let us go to our additional information the mortgage loan from get capital bank was obtained on 1 june 2018 and is going to be repaid over five years 60 equal monthly installments are to be made over five years repayments excluding interest are made at the end of each month and flamingo limited is up to date with the repayments on 31 december 2020 interest is not capitalized and it has been debited and credited in the applicable accounts all right so we are going to say 60 months because this loan should be repaid over 60 months right then this loan was obtained on 1 june 2018 this loan was obtained on 1 june right 1 june 2018 this loan was obtained on 1 june 2018 all right let us just broaden this one and do this was obtained on 1 june 2018 and our year our current financial year is this one all right it ends on 31 december 2020 31 december right 31 december 2020 and this loan amount right is as at 31 december 2020 all right since that loan amount is as at 31 december 2020 and here they are saying and the flamingo limited is up to date with repayments on 31 december 2020 yes and flamingo limited is up to date with the repayments on 31 december 2020 it means that this loan amount that we are having right here yeah, 304,152 is what is left to be paid back as at that one December 2020 so how many months have we paid back the loan so far we are going to count from June up to uh, that one we are going to count from 1 June 2018 up to that one December 2020 so that is very easy let us just write our months here 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 so let us check january february march april may june july august september october november december okay 
so we are going to say uh, from 1 june 2018 up to 31 december 2018 which is from june up to december here how many months are they they are seven months they are seven months so we are going to say this is one june this is one june right 2018 up to 31 december 2018 all right then we are going to add how many months 12 months right 12 months from uh, this is 1 january this is 1 january um 2019 up to 31 december right 31 december 2019 then we should add 12 again we should add 12 again right we should add 12 again this is uh, now 2020 this is 2020 so what do we get then what do we get then 7 plus 12 plus 12 get that one right get that one so okay so how many months are we left with how many months are we left with we are going to say 60 right because remember a uh, 60 equal monthly installments are to be made over five years so 60 subtract 31 is equals to 60 subtract 31 is equals to we are going to say 60 subtract 31 is equals to 29 we'll get 29 here all right so we are left with the 29 months and uh, remember we want to split this amount we want to split this amount we want to have a non-current liability and a current liability so let us uh, calculate our current liability there let us calculate our current liability liability remember we said this is the amount that we are going to pay back in 12 months or less so let us say 12 over since we are left with 29 months over 29 multiply by multiply by our amount 304,152 okay so what do we get there what do we get then 12 over 29 multiply by 304,152 we are going to get 125,856 all right so this is what is going to be paid back in the next 12 months right this is what is going to be paid back in the next 12 months let us come here and say current portion of loan current portion of loan this is what is going to be paid back in the next 12 months so we should subtract that from this okay 304,152 subtract uh, the amount that we have calculated what do we get we are going to say we are going to say 304,152 subtract 125,856 we are going to get 178,296 that's what we are going to get then since it is only one amount here it is also going to be our total here then we are now under trade and other payables okay so we are going to say creditors control what is the amount four million seven hundred and twenty eight thousand right let us see if we have anything that we are adding or anything that we are subtracting remember we have this one we have this one 
right? We are going to say plus 27,600. Plus 27,600. We have already uh, done this one. So the explanation, you already have it. Okay. So um, what is another one? There is this one. A payment of 69,600 that was made to a creditor during the year was mistakenly recorded twice by the bookkeeper. So if a payment is recorded twice, it means that, right, it means that this amount was subtracted twice from our creditor's control amount because this was a payment to a creditor, right? So since it was a payment to a creditor, it was subtracted twice from our creditor's control because remember this amount was recorded twice by the bookkeeper so if it was subtracted twice it means that we are supposed to add back the other amount that was not supposed to be subtracted we are supposed to add back the other amount that was not supposed to be subtracted so now what do we get then now what do we get then we are going to say four million seven hundred and twenty thousand plus twenty seven thousand all right sorry 27600 plus 69600 okay do we have anything else there we are going to get 4,825,200 4,825,200 then do we have anything else that falls under um, and and our current liabilities okay i can see that we have final dividends here and final dividends uh, we have them here because we calculated them when we're doing part a so you should look for the tutorial video of part a all right so final dividends this is the amount okay we just take it from here we come and put it here and this is called shareholders for dividends shareholders right for dividends for dividends right okay now let us uh, do our calculations there we are going to say 4,825,200 plus 125,000 856 plus 358,200 what are we going to get 5,309,256 right uh, 5,309,256 okay so now let us add all these we are going to say uh, five million three hundred and nine thousand two hundred and fifty six plus one hundred and seventy eight thousand two hundred and ninety six okay plus eight million okay sorry plus eight million plus eight million right plus eight million and ninety eight thousand six hundred and eighty what do we get 13 million five hundred and eighty six thousand two hundred and thirty two okay so we are going to say thirteen million five hundred and eighty six thousand two hundred and thirty two so you can see that our assets here this is the amount right is equals to is equals to equity and liabilities so this is how we prepare our statement of financial position thank you